You're a bit of a novice when it comes to using your smartphone for filming. You're a watch fan. You want to learn how to take killer footage with your smartphone of your watches? Then stay tuned. I'll show you how. Sir Watch Geek! Sir Watch Geek! Sir Watch Geek! Sir Watch Geek. Well, hello fellow watch fans and welcome to another video from me, Sir Watch Geek. Well, as you can tell from the intro bit, today's video is something a little different. So if you've come along expecting a watch review or an unboxing or general watch chitter chat, then perhaps this isn't the video for you. Yes, today we are talking about how you can improve your smartphone videoing techniques when it comes to filming watches because you're obviously watch fans you've probably got watches and you've more than likely got a smartphone so what is this killer footage that i talk about well here it is Well, I think, even though I say so myself, that that's jolly good footage, isn't it? And that was all filmed with my smartphone, which I haven't got in front of me. <coughs> yes, that was all filmed with my smartphone. Now, this is my rather outdated now in a respect in some respects my samsung galaxy note 8 superseded by several other versions of note um, but it is still very good at filming video so if you want to know how to produce results like that um, then stay tuned there there will be a bit of a financial outlay and it would also help if you had a video editor on your PC. I'm probably not winning you over with this already, but you can also achieve these results with free software on your phones. And there are also free video editors out there that you can download onto your PC. So what did I use to achieve that? Well, here is the first item. Ta-da! Yes, this is it. Now, this is called a dolly in video terms, which basically is a platform with wheels that you mount your camera on. Now, in terms of film and TV, these are obviously an awful lot bigger. Um, the best example I can give you is if you are in the UK and you watch snooker on the TV, um, next time it's on, have a watch. The two guys that are usually in the corner of the snooker tables in the corners, they have huge big tripods with huge broadcast cameras on and they are mounted on dollies. You'll see that their tripods have three huge wheels on the corner which allows them to push the camera around. Very useful. Um, now this is a, a miniature version of a dolly this cost me in this form this cost me a shade under 14 great british pounds and what's really good about this there are bearings on the wheels nice rubber wheels but what is good about this is that you can angle the wheels as well like so so when you are filming you can film in an arc you get where I'm coming from? Yes. But how, pray tell, do you mount the camera to this device? Well, this is another little gadget called a smart arm. It's actually called a magic arm. But for some reason, 
I keep calling it a smart arm. It's an age thing. Now this was £14 as it is. I've already got several smart arms through for my other video usage that I've done over the years. This with the smart arm is £20 on Amazon and they're also available on eBay. There are all sorts of prices, all sorts of sort of qualities. This is cheap as chips and this is the smart arm that I already had. So it comes with the tripod mount thread size, so it's very adaptable for mounting any video accessories on. So what you do with this is you screw the magic arm onto the thread that's in the dolly. That's nice and tight there. Now you've got to mount your smartphone to this. Well, this is the device that I use. This is a um, an extending and adjustable smartphone holder for tripod. These on eBay are uh, two quid to five quid, no more. Comes with the tripod thread, so obviously all you do then is mount this onto the other end of the magic arm like so and there you've got the makings of a camera dolly it's good isn't it yes so what you do with your phone I'll, I'll go through the the gubbins first then i'll talk about how to creatively make your shots and then we'll talk about what you need to have on your phone settings and a little bit about editing so the phone slides in like so and what you do with the magic arm when you undo it, it allows you to reposition your device wherever you like, and when you tighten it up, it stays rock solid. So that is basically all you do. So in terms of filming a watch, I would have this angled. It's gonna take a bit of fiddling. I would have this angled such that the lenses of your camera are right in the center of the rotating axis. So we'll mount it like so, and we'll tighten the knob. So there you go. And we'll have it set up uh, with the wheels at that sort of angle. So then you bring in your watch. Here's one I prepared earlier. Here's my Oris, which was what I filmed and you saw in the clip. So at the very, very basic switch your camera into video mode focus in press record and then very smoothly move the dolly round for about four or five seconds press stop that's one clip done now this is good for rotating if we set the wheels to be straight and i've actually mounted that right in the way there you go let's angle it down like that let's just mount the wheel straight this then becomes effectively a camera slider and a slider is another video accessory that allows you to slide your camera backwards and forwards so when the wheels are straight you can slide the camera backwards and forwards um, in terms of films and TV, you'll see a slider being used when the camera sort of appears from behind a wall to reveal the subject in the distance. That's, that's what a camera slider is used for. So this instantly has turned your dolly into a camera slider. So you can press record again and then get some very, very nice shots across. You're probably thinking when you saw the clip, there were some weird, nice sort of angles going on. Now, the other, the other way you could do this is with a turntable, a product photography turntable, which is about yay big. And you put your watch in the middle and the turntable rotates and you keep your camera still. That's good. You still need to have your camera pretty close to the watch. So you still need something to mount it on. And all that is good for is rotating. So as I've said, with it lined up like this, and one of the shots I did on the video was to have the, was to have the phone facing down like that. And I had the, the uh, watch on the table with the strap facing up. So I then did a 
slide over the top and then pause to get the strap in and then moved it across. That's another shot. But how to get the cool angles as well is you can have your phone at an angle. So if you have your phone mounted at a crazy angle, crazy angle, and then adjusted your wheels to have a little bit of angle on them, then when you go round, when you play that back, you're obviously playing it back at a quirky angle. So it looks like the camera is going over the watch in different planes and you can get some really good creative footage in that. The problem you might be seeing from this is that when you get closer to the watch, it goes a little bit blurred when you get too close. Now, again, I'm so prepared, haven't got them in front of me. Bear with me. I might be a bit more professional one day, probably won't be this year, but there you go. So let's move that out of the way. Let's turn that off. Specifically with my phone and many smartphones, you can only get so close to the, uh, to the item that you're filming before the focus doesn't work anymore. So another great investment I made this summer was for some clip-on lenses. You might have seen or heard of these clip-on lenses that basically just clip over your smartphone lens and then turn your phone into a macro lens. This particular kit also comes with a wide angle lens and I've also got a fisheye lens as well for those super duper, super wide distorted shots. Perhaps not totally usable all the time. 20 pounds for a whole set. Most of the photos I've put on Instagram of my macro shots are taken with this. Um, and what it allows you to do is get a hell of a lot closer to the watch and get some really, really good photos. In terms of video, the reason why this is really useful is because even though smartphones these days come with video stabilization, they, they, they never really take up all the juddering that you'll induce with your hands. And when you get closer to an object and try and pan round, it's really all over the place. So this coupled with a lens adapter allows you, and I hope you can see it from there, allows you to get really, really close. And then it's just a case of filming some passing shots at different angles. There you go, that's a lovely one there. And then we'll angle the phone a little bit differently. There we go, and now we can we can come round and get some lovely nice close-up shots of the front of the watch. And that's basically what it is, a series of four or five second long clips of you going round the outside of the watch at different angles, different camera angles, um, being as steady as you can because this is cheap as chips and the bearings inside the wheels aren't brilliantly smooth so when you push it sometimes you can notice a bit of camera shake if you put a bit of pressure down as you move and make your actions really smooth you'll get some absolutely buttery smooth footage and that's basically what you do. There, um, there are other things to consider then when filming. All the footage that you saw in my little example was slowed down. Yes, we used slow motion. Now using slow motion helps to really make your footage look even smoother. Um, and you don't have to be, it also sort of absorbs some of the camera shaking, if you like. So you have to look at the video capabilities of your phone. On this Note 8, it allows you to film, one of the video settings is 60 frames per second. 
Now you might think, oh, what does that mean? I'm gonna try and explain this without getting too technical, but it might be. So here is a schematic of a film type movie camera. And as you can see, we have the subject out front that's being filmed. Then we have a lens which focuses the light that's going to enter the camera. Behind this is the shutter and this shutter opens and closes every time a frame of film is passed behind it. And behind the shutter is the film. And as I said, this is passed behind the shutter one frame at a time. So a film is made up of thousands of individual photos that when played back one after the other gives us our film. Now obviously smartphones don't use film but the principles of uh, frame rate, etc. still apply. Now, when you film at 60 frames per second, when you play it back and you slow the playback down, I'm, I'm, I'm really sort of making this as basic as possible, but because there are so many frames going past, you can slow the playback down and the footage will still look slow motion. If you're filming at 30 frames per second, and you try to slow it down, you'll start getting a bit of judder because there aren't enough frames being passed in front of the sensor to allow you to slow it down, if you see what I mean. Now you don't have to use slow motion. If your movement is buttery smooth and you can make the camera movement really slow, then film it at normal speed. But for me, I find that if I film everything at 60 frames per second, it allows me to slow the footage down. Now, how do you slow the footage down, I hear you ask? Well, I use a video editor on my phone called Ucut, which is a free video editor. It allows you to basically do everything that you saw in my montage of, of clips. Um, what you do, you drag your footage into the, the timeline in the video editor, and then you can play about with the playback speed. So if you put your 60 frames per second footage in and adjust the playback speed on the video editor down to, you can go as low as 0.4, and then you play that footage back, you still get buttery smooth slow motion. And all that's done on your phone. There are loads and loads of video editors. I'm only using Ucut as an example because that's what I have. You can trim and cut your clips. You can add more clips in. You can add fancy transitions as well. And you can add color grading and you can overlay <clears throat> a music track on the top. So you can basically do everything on your phone. The clips you saw me do were edited on my computer, on my um, Vegas Pro, which is the video editing software I use for my professional work and my films, etc. Um, but you don't have to do that. There are also tons of free video editors for PC and Mac out there, which you can download, have a play with, import all your clips from your phone and start having a play. So that's it in a nutshell very a very quick introduction to to how i used um, this to make those clips and the sky's the limit the sky really is the limit i mean i've already thought of another example of filming if you've got a dog i thought it would be great you could have the you could have your phone pointing at the dog the dog can come running towards you and then you can cut to another clip looking through the dog's eyes but of your phone mounted on this and you're pushing this forward and it looks like you're looking through the dog's eyes then you cut back to the dog running towards you then you cut back to this if we had a dog i could show you that but we haven't but the sky is the limit with something like this i'm finding it really really useful already um there are so many creative ways that you can use it by setting your different angles, um, setting your different wheel angles. It's not camber, that's different, but your different angle on your wheels to get rotation or to get panning or to go over the top. Um, and I find it really good. So that, that, that's it, really. Uh, I don't know if you've found this useful or not. Maybe you've got more questions <laughs> than it's answered. If you have drop the comments below. I will be back to doing watch 
watch videos soon and in those watch videos you're probably going to see a lot of clips like the one I've done of the watches that I review in the future. I think I'll shut up. If I haven't bored you to death please like and subscribe. Um, take care, stay safe and I'll see you soon. I hope this is in focus.